Okay, we should be live. It's the 15th of August and I'm doing another live stream as kind of the, the crypto daily debrief. So what we're covering today is a decent amount of FUD on a new project which has just released its pre-sale token to the people that went and signed up. And we've got some crazy uh, actionables regarding FTX you need to get in now and other actionables just in general. Now, I'm not super well practiced at live streams, so we'll see how I go. All right, let's jump into the first thing here. Let's see how this looks. All right, we should be okay. So Slog says this, remember when people sent $30 million to a random pre-sale wallet on Twitter? It went live today. Only a small percentage was put into the LP. Only 20% went to pre-sellers. There's a 6% buy and sell tax, and it is uh, currently 70%, 70 to 80% down already. It gets ever, even worse. Uh, this isn't too too bad, but whatever. Uh, basically, this is GM, gm.ai, and you have you have it as staked GM. So you have to kind of take it out of that in order to sell it, apparently. And apparently some some difficulty with the website. Now, I do have a little bit of contact with the team. And all my point is, is there's a, a couple of points here. Firstly, in all cases, you don't just send 30, you don't just send money randomly to a, a pre-sale address, unless, of course, you're willing to degen quite considerably, which is fine. You know, we all do it. Uh, but now let's actually go over all of all of the FUD and what I would suggest the team does to make this better. So GM.ai, they raised $30 million. They've got a lot of followers. Um, a lot of these will just be like airdrop farmers. Some maybe some will be bots 100% for certain. Actually, I just want to see, I want to compare, compare to Solana. How many followers does Solana have itself? Okay, 2.7 million. Okay, so they've got two addresses. We're going to check them both and... We'll, we'll, and then we'll go over all the news and we'll have a look at it in deck screen as well. So in deck screener, this is essentially what happened just up and then bomb. It's just rocketed down. So remember there's $30 million gone here. Of, of course, I can't go and put that all into liquidity. I'm not sure if they ever said there was going to be 20% allocation for pre-sales because I never got involved with this, but for some actual clarification or not clarification, rather a disclaimer, I have covered intent trade, which is created by the GM.ai team. As a sponsored video, this is already a tool that I liked. Now, I'm not sponsored in any way by like GM. I have no allocation of tokens. I never jumped into the pre-sale. I do think an AI platform has, it definitely has the ability to be successful. However, whatever this is, it needs to be done a lot better than this. You can't like, I'm gonna point out some crazy things and then I'm just gonna link the video to the team and say, these are things that you should fix. So having a look at deck screener here, the, the price is, you know, tanked considerably, of course. Uh, fully diluted valuation is just going down, down. Market caps just going down, down. People just claiming their tokens and whatnot. I actually thought, and I still think it could be worthwhile. I thought we could add some liquidity because it was trading in this nice range, but now we've just dumped down. It might not be so good. The major point is they've got a small amount of liquidity. There's no nothing locked as well. So what I'm going to do is I've taken both of these contract addresses and I've put them into intent.trade. Now I actually 100% think intent.trade is a cool app. It gives us lots of stuff. Where I'm a little bit confused is why they didn't think that they should have, you know, some decent transparency on their token when they launched it. It's very easy to recover from this. All you need to do is just have better communication and kind of approach Meow's cat approach. All right, so TLDR, this is a GMA token. This is a main token, not the X one. Um, and we can probably do it. Maybe we need to do a, a bit of a refresh on this actually. How can I refresh this? Just because now the trading range has just changed and the market cap has gone down. So let's do a new request because in the last 15 minutes or so, it's gone down. Okay, this this is not live. So this hasn't updated immediately, which is some feedback for the team. But what I want to show is this. Um, so despite this, uh, the look, okay, come back up here. All right, so this is, okay, let's just stay up here. So it, it indicates a rigid supply and stable governance structure. Despite this, the liquidity pool isn't locked. The market and 2 million liquidity shows a moderate market presence, but deserve scrutiny due to distribution concentration. So this is essentially like due diligence is recommended before making any financial decisions. So they have this information. They already know that they've gone and done it in a way where it doesn't look good as an, for an AI to th think, maybe we should get some of this. Rug check, it's dangerous. Nothing is locked in the LP, which I think is, that is kind of the bigger issue. It was only launched yesterday. They can lock it whenever they like. Uh, and then this is the price. Let's have a look at the actual chart analysis quickly. Sideways, recent level, current level, uh, confidence level, medium, that'll be in sideways range. So I will actually go and 
put some liquidity in. I'll do it live on stream and we can see how it how it is at the end. If we have a look at the other token, it's it's X staked. It's basically the same. Uh, then if we have a look at the tokenomics, the tokenomics, a lot of people have tokenomics like this. We're just starting to get into an age now where even with deep, like I think it's more important that I attack and attack and attack and then put people on the back foot, put projects on the back foot so that they become more transparent. Ultimately, you will succeed the more dupe like you become. Even if the dupe price, the token doesn't go up straight up in value. And of course, nothing in this is financial advice, but basically you're going to improve your project the more you have community aligned. If you're just trying to pump your own bags and extract like we have done in all the previous past cycles, people are smarter now. They have people like myself and thousands or millions of other people that are just like, no, I'm not going to do that. We still have people that DGN into meme coins and just get rugged and then wonder why. I don't know quite why that's happening, but nevertheless, community, we need to know kind of what this is going to go for. So I'm going to ask for like plenty of clarification. Pre-sale, 20% completely unlocked token generation event, liquidity and airdrop, and then the foundation. So exactly how the team is uh, kind of taking their tokens, I'm unsure. There's also a token tax at 6% buy and sell. Apparently this is not forever. So this is why it's mutable. Now, if we have a look at rug check, uh, this price is wrong on rug check. So I don't know why that is, but basically it's danger. It should be like, well, whatever it is, it's, it's quite low, just over one cent. Anyway, so we just have a lot of danger here. The liquidity is completely misrepresented here. Nothing to do with like GM.ai. This is like a bug with a rug check or something like that. And they just need to have a lot more transparency with all the tokenomics and the fact that there's high ownership. Now you can't, you're going to have high ownership immediately, but you should know that you should lock some liquidity and you should also make sure that, you know, who are the owners of the addresses are very transparent. So this is all fixable within a day. Same thing with state GM. Like this is a little bit different. It's just state. The, there's, it's a it's a mintable thing, right? So the more GM that becomes staked, um, the higher this goes up. There is some liquidity there, so you can go and sell your XGM directly for soul. Uh, if we have a look at BirdEye, we can't, and we give it a refresh. This is going to show us what the actual liquidity in the pools is more likely to be: two point two million and four hundred fifty-seven. So let's. I'm going to go and apen. I'm not suggesting anyone do this, but they are welcome to do so if they want. So we know there's a, a six percent sell tax and Let's go and find the pool. I'm just, I'm going to jump into pools, just, just straight in with a dynamic pool as opposed to DLMMing and it's GM. Let's see if we can pull it up here. So GM and Soul. Now, the reason why I want to jump in is firstly, the liquidity, we can see it's already decreased. It'd be liquidity and radium as well, of course. But the fees, this was just showing 200 and something. So maybe, I don't know why that's just gone down. But when I was looking at it 20 minutes ago, it was 200,000. Either way, if we go back, the yield is high. It's it's very high. And because it's trading in a range, maybe this does well. Uh, GM sold this one here. There's not enough liquidity in here to make a difference. So I'm just going to go with this one. And I just want to see what it's going to do. So we don't have any GM. We've got some soul. Come to dupe and we'll go and grab a little bit of USDC. I'll grab all of it. This is with my 10K to 100K challenge. So I, I am doing this. Okay, so this is clearly, there's some API issue off here. All we want is we don't want we, we know we've got a 6% tax, so let's just see how this looks, or it might be better if we go directly to dupe. Slippage is, is something we don't want to get screwed by at any stage. Um, what is this token address? Just go and copy that, come back here, paste it in, GM. All right, connect the wallet. Soulflare, Soulflare is my wallet of choice. Everyone should be using Soulflare, in my opinion. All right, let's do this. I think, I think this makes sense, right? Pull up, I was going to pull up a calculator, but what we can just do is just one dollar or what one token is you need to check these things when tokens are, are brand new because if you don't you could just there could be some api error and you just get absolutely slaughtered because obviously right now whatever api thinks this is four dollars and 70 when it's 1.3 cents so i want to see up here that basically if i swap 1.3 cents sorry that's that should get me 10 this should get me about 10 tokens there you are it's, all right it's going down so this looks fine we have the swap tax we'll see how it looks it's down this is purely degenerate. It might not work. We may not print any fees, but I want to do it for now. And then I want to see if we made anything at the end. All right. So now I'm going to add max and 0.7 uh, deposit. So what are we putting in here? Basically two, $205, $204. We'll go and put in $205 and we'll just see how it looks in terms of fees. All right. Let's get back to the news. So I'm going to just quickly talk about Superbase just because people 
keep on asking me for like, can I do a rundown on this? And I've tried, but I cannot join the Telegram. I think the Telegram means you have to hold a super base NFT. So I've reached out to Jakey. Uh, Jakey's someone I like. He's not the best um, replier to DMs. And he said like, hey, let's do a, a podcast and then nothing's gone further. So there's not, there's no hate on Jakey or anything like that. I, I need to spend time on what, on what is valuable and not being replied to. It, like, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for anyone trying to schedule stuff. So what I can tell you from the limited information I have, you can go and watch all their live streams. They're just quite long. And I want to do a different you know, system where it's just like, what are you building? Who are you? What's your goal? What's your vision? I don't want to know what you ate for breakfast or, or anything that's just random. Like we're, we're talking about crypto. Obviously the brand was super based. I don't own any NFTs, by the way. Obviously the brand with this is about like semi nudity and like a media company. But if we scroll on down, right down here, uh, there's a segment, this this segment here. And this basically has Steve, Solana Steve talking about like, what are they trying to build? I'm not sure if you're gonna, probably not. I don't think I, I turned that on. But essentially I'll link it below and just watch this one clip. And then if that aligns with you, you can go and grab an NFT. Like most NFTs, like it's under floor price. I wouldn't hold that against anyone. What I think is very important for all projects is like, some sort of transparency of what it is you're trying to build. You've just gone and raised your nine hundred thousand dollars. Plus, you're trying to do a seed a seed raise. What are you building? There's a pitch deck out there, and it's a media company and maybe a magazine. But like, what are you doing, and why should you buy uh, an NFT? I, that's the stuff I wanted to basically show for the people that watch this channel to give a little bit more transparency to what it is that they're doing. Because yes, it's a degenerate media company. I don't think degenerate has like a massive product market fit this cycle unless it's high chance number goes up. Anyway, let's jump into the news. I've been told to make this more exciting. So give me your feedback and let's make this more exciting so more people can learn about Solana, learn about crypto and not be rugged or scammed. We've got some downward movement in the crypto markets in general, which is fine. Like we're in this kind of this sideways movement as I keep on reiterating, which is a boring thing to say. This is a boring time to be in the markets. This is a time when you want to be in the markets and you want to level up these bags and get these DCAs and spot buys filled in my opinion. Souls down a little bit, all good. By the way, I'm not covering this because I don't use the wallet, but Phantom Wallet, if you woke up or if you had a look at some stage and it showed all of your tokens missing, they had something wrong with their wallet. I believe it's now been fixed. I don't use the wallet anymore, so I'm unsure. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about Bitcoin. And I should probably make this a little bit bigger. There we are. That should be okay, I think, for most viewers. So um, 10,000 Bitcoin has been moved to Coinbase Prime, which people speculate is sell pressure. However, there's more, there's a decent amount of information suggesting they're just using Coinbase Prime as the actual custodian, which I think is smart. I think, you know, I don't know if I could trust the governments with ledgers and hot wallets and all these sort of things sometimes. Uh, I just, I think this is probably a smarter idea. I would prefer if you as an individual self custodied some of your assets, but for a government, strangely, I, I don't know how much I'd trust them to. So they're actually moving it. This is the US Marshal Service. Obviously, they go and confiscate all this Bitcoin. They select Coinbase Prime to provide custody. They also, however, do advanced tra trading services, so they can be trading, but it could just be doing custody. It could also be a bit of an FU moment to like the Trump comeback because he wants to have Bitcoin. I mean, it would be silly. It'd be really silly coming up to an election for the fact that like there's like 20, 30, 40 percent, I can't remember what it is, of people in the US hold some sort of crypto. And if the current power, current party in power, if they went and sold it, that wouldn't be this, the best move in my opinion, but we'll see. So we've got lots of stuff here, of course, just mentioning that it has been moved, it has been moved, but I don't think it's going to be sold. Of course, if it is the start of the US government, we have to be prepared for this. If it is the start of the US government dumping all its BT BTC, we, should, we are screwed in the short term. Uh, and if they started selling some, they'd probably sell like a decent amount. But I think the only reason that they would want to do it is to like really like mess up their election. I just don't think that's a smart idea. Now, I would say the same just for anyone that's blue as opposed to red. I would say the same if it was the red. Like I'm not political in this sense. I just want to, I'm not in the US or anything. I just want to make no, I don't care for those comments about don't talk about politics. Politics influence crypto. It's relevant. If it was the red, if it was the Republicans in power right now and selling Bitcoin and the Democrats that wanted to foster it more, I would have this the same view re just reversed, right? I would still be like, if you do this, you're hurting your election chances. So that's why I think, you know, these people are intelligent. They do silly things and politicians, you know, certainly can't be trusted, but they're intelligent people. I don't think they're going to be throwing the election like this. Anyway, 
the US government holds a decent amount of Bitcoin. So if it does happen, like it's going to be brutal. So I don't think this is a time to have any leverage in the markets, by the way. So far, they've transferred like almost a uh, billion dollars to Coinbase Prime in three transactions. However, within three days of those first transfers, the price of BTC both dropped by 5%. So maybe they are actually selling it. That's just something just to consider. It could also just be following the money and it doesn't look, you know, you follow the money and you think that's, you know, you're almost, you're selling the news. Now, Trader Coz is layering some bids between this price and this price. And I'm not sure if he's just doing spot bids. I imagine he's doing spot bids. I don't think there's any leverage here. Uh, just buy here, sell here could be his plan. For me, BTC, I, I don't I don't need it at the moment. I'd need some, I'd love some, but I don't care for it. It's just a little bit too risky. One thing is you have to zoom out. And this is a really good chart because we can see that we have essentially one down year and then three up years. Up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, 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 down, up, up. And then generally the middle year is the biggest generally right biggest here biggest no that wasn't okay that wasn't all right it's not generally the biggest as we can see this is such an early cycle i think you can kind of discount it there weren't any there wasn't anyone around um this cycle everyone kind of jumped into this part and then this is when the biggest move up was but i think that's because the low the low was really low with the the march covid crash and then up it came, up it went and then the peak here i guess my opinion is we go up a little bit, of course, but next year is where we shine. Now, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, came back as lower, 2.9%, forecast of 3%. Not really much to report on there, essentially, if inflation's potentially under control. So we shouldn't see any tightening of monetary policy or anything like that, most likely. Now, this is very important. Let me just zoom out one bit. Okay, so if you have funds in FTX, and I do, you need to go today. You need to go today and actually go and claim, start the claim process. It's been something that I've put off. It's, you know, it's bureaucratic. It doesn't work very well, but it needs to be done. So there's, uh, Noit has this tutorial. I haven't done it. I'll do it later today. You can, you can potentially not choose the US. You may only have to, you may only be able to do Bahamas. And then my team's gone ahead and put to, uh, put together this. The election deadlines, 8 p.m. UTC. I, I'm not entirely sure if like, if you miss out, like it's, it's game over. We're going to try, we're going to, I'm going to try and do my thing. We have to complete KYC and AML and whatever. These are the actionables. Have a read of it. Just make sure you get it, get into it. Other very important deadline is check your wallets, use airdrop.link and check for any drift in them because you need to claim this by tomorrow, 6 p.m. UTC. And if you don't, you lose your drift. You can also check your Lulo wallets. Check your Lulo if you were using Lulo or Flexland as was initially called months ago, because you'll have quite often 100 drift in your Lulo wallets. I have to do that myself. Infinex, remember, I'm bullish on Infinex. The reason why I think it's going to take over. We haven't, um, I think it's going to take over like next year. So if you can win one of these, I think it'd be decent. Until August, uh, participants will have opportunity to win this. August 16th, midnight. So you've gone until midnight UTC. You don't have much time. There, there haven't been many people that have actually jumped into these. Probably like under 400. It'll cost you around $15 or less in gas. And you also have to have a wall account, which is like $5 a year. Uh, okay, it no longer shows you how many have been claimed or how many holders there are. But I think it's around four. And then you need, you need like 10 USDC, sorry, 10 USDE or something like that that you swap and deposit in on the base network. So there's a few steps involved. But I think it's worthwhile. Just a reminder, check out the Solana crypto calendar and just go and bookmark it. It needs to be bookmarked. That way you can see everything that's going on. It's going for a bit of a revisal as well. So we'll only get better and better. And we'll even have a section where you can submit something that you think should be put into the calendar. So we have more stuff. Here's a fifth and so on. Like yesterday or today, we've got the truffle giveaway collection. Um, August 19th is when it expires. So going into that as well. Now, some bullish news for Jupiter Exchange. They did the planetary call yesterday where they went over just a frank conversation on things. We, we don't need to discuss that yet. When the clips are out on Jupiter's YouTube, I will le let you know about them. The thing is, Jupiter Exchange is not just a competitor to Uniswap. Well, it's not even a competitor to Uniswap. It doesn't have its liberals, media or does, of course. But it's not like a competitor to one inch. Firstly, it's on Solana and only on Solana. But its biggest thing is the fact that it, it, can, it will have probably the most amount of traffic of all dApps. It's probably already like that. And then on top of that, you have a perp stacks. And at present, the perp stacks, there's three assets. You have Sol, C, and Wrapped ETH. And by the way, with Wrapped BTC, 
maybe there's some changes there. We'll go over that shortly. But the essential thing is the fact that the amount of TVL, the amount of trading fees that is actually being generated, I don't need the trading fee, the, the TVL is insane. And the fact that this is actually earning a decent yield, like JLP is my kind of top five token by far. And just look at it. It's just massive. I mean, GMX, DYDX, DYDX was just the golden child of 2020, 2021. And it's, and they were on ETH and then they jumped off into the Cosmos ecosystem with their own chain. And this airdrop was worth tens of thousands or millions to some people. And now their TVL is just dropping. They're just not being competitive. Drift has more TVL. And Hyperliquid, I haven't used this, nor GMX. Jupiter Perps, and this is with only three pairs in USDC and USDT. So that's absolutely incredible. Now, at, at present, there's $66 million worth of tea in the JLP pool. And if you didn't know, WBTC is going through a bit of an issue with custodians. And Meow chatted about it yesterday. At present, he's kind of okay with it. But like, they don't, you know, it's a little bit risky because we don't, there is no, there is no way to have true uh, unexploitable BTC Ethereum without having custodians. And they've only got three of them. So they have 53 days left before the custody officially moves to the new entity. Um, we shouldn't move hastily, but if there is a better alternative, it can be traded out. The T can be unwound and then, and then you can go and add in another one. But I don't think there's a better alternative at present. Later today, 8 p.m. UTC, the Jupe and Juice podcast is happening. This is done by uh, Sax and Wake. And I'll be in there with a couple of people from uh, a couple of people from the Uplink just chatting. You're welcome to join if it interests you. And if you if you want to become a cadet, I think if you want to become a cadet, go join the Jupiter Discord server, get started. And it's I think it's a valuable thing more so for the people with a lower net worth to just learn. It's kind of like, you know, a bit of an internship. Just learn about how things should be done. That will help you research. I think that will make you some profitable trades in this cycle. Epoch 7 has ended for Get Grass. So next step would be a token generation event, just as an FYI. And the road to TGE, we don't know when it is. The checker will be uh, live soon, I think. And then we've got token generation event. I think Grass could do pretty well, but it's still not the most favorable conditions. Next bit of news, we have a Circle teases tap to pay using USDC coming soon to iPhones for clarify clarification on this. The reason why this is happening is because Apple is basically uh, letting the NFC chip be used by third party app developers. So it's not, there's no, there's nothing to do with Apple other than the fact that they're just opening up their tech a little bit. Camino news, if you want a little bit of a cloud exposure, but you don't want to buy cloud, you can go and put in INF and Sol. This will have very minor liquid uh, impairment loss or divergence loss, and you're going to earn 16.4% total APY with some of that from cloud. There's of course cloud and INF, which earns a lot more. Uh, what you can do, and unfortunately there's only one here, so we'll have to look at the other one. But what you can do is you can see how the Camino strategy has been doing. So let's go have a quick look at it, and then we can work out if we think it will do well. Because some, surprisingly, have done well in this, in this market. So we jump into liquidity, and we can just go type in cloud, cloud and INF. And then what we want to do is analytics. And we can have a look at the period, 30 days, or, uh, well, I think it's only been out for 30 days, so 30 days. So if we just held by itself, we would have outperformed Camino strategy. And in fact, Camino strategy was worse than just holding the, the two tokens. And this sometimes happens. This is impairment loss. That that wouldn't be something that I would necessarily want to dive into anyway, um, unless it got met points. That's that's the, the caveat. We can also have a look at, uh, was it INF and Sol? This should be far better. This, should, this shouldn't have any impairment loss. Uh, INF HODL, SOL HODL. So this strategy here is not factoring in the fact that you're claiming the points that, that yield differently. So that's the Camino strategy here. You're basically the same. You're the same as this. So it probably doesn't, doesn't like the, the fees in the last two days hasn't been massive. But if you, if you actually go and deposit some, you have this cloud to claim. And now it's, the incentives has gone down, but it's still worthwhile. One I want to show you is JTO. JTO has done well. So if we have a look at JTO and Jito Sol, decent boosted fees. So you, you claim those boosted fees here. They're not shown in the analytics. And if we kind of zoom out 90 days, I think this is up with the Camino strategy. Sometimes you just need to keep them there for a little bit of time. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Just give this a second. Obviously we're live, so we don't want to wait on it too long. Give it one refresh, back to analytics. 90 days, give it to me. Okay, 90 days. Um... Okay, no, hasn't outperformed uh, in over 90 days. 
but it probably has over 30 days. So over 30 days, it's up a little bit, which is good. Just JTOs, I guess, outperformed. If we go back to this 90 days though, we would be down 32% as opposed to down 13%. So really we'd be down 19% if we just held Judo Soul by itself. However, 19% over 90 days, we probably would have made that back with the boosted APY because APY would have been bigger uh, initially, but I can't say that for sure. Anyway, just a reminder with Camino, if you have Camino tokens, make sure you go and claim them and then go and stake them. I've staked all mine and maybe if I have some random wallet I have to claim, I'll just stake. I haven't sold any Camino. I don't plan on, sta on, on, on doing it. They're on a road to $10 billion. To like I showed yesterday, all these apps that are losing or gaining minor amounts of liquidity and Camino is just, they're doing well. And like everyone knows, I'm direct. I message Vic, Deuce, Nero here all the time and be like, this could be better, this could be better, this could be better, this could be better. And he's just there going, thank you for your <laughs> feedback, basically. But I like this team because one of the few teams that are just happy to hear what I have to say. And it's based on the feedback of everyone leaving comments. So I appreciate when you leave comments. And this is why I think this will be successful. And that's why I'm holding the community tokens. Of course, it's going to be an unlock period for the VCs and anyone in the seed rounds. And when that happens, like we'll have to monitor that. But right now, I put it in, we get a, a max staking boost, we get more points. The more points allows us to get more community tokens. And there's got to be some stage in the DAO. The DAO is being formed now where maybe have like you you pay less interest or you have less fees. These, this sort of thing like can have real utility other than just being governance. Next bit of news, Jito announcement with Renzo Protocol. I'll get my researcher uh, who should be watching right now to look into this or another researcher. Um, but basically this is a restaking protocol. I'm not bullish on these things because I'm not knowledgeable about them. So there's, that's the caveat there. They're launching and uh, they've done very well on other blockchains. So Renzo, they, they're known for its work on Eigen, Eigen layer, and I don't know this one. So I haven't heard this one, but I, I of course know about this one. So we want to look into that. And at present, the actionable is you go and connect your Solana wallet, you connect it here for the first 10K wallets. That's the actionable. Go and do that, not with a ledger or anything. I don't anticipate any exploit risk, but just go and do that and jump in with a hot wallet. You never know, could do well. We need to look into it, no clue really. Ultimately, how will the APY be bigger than just staking? And of course, there is smart contract risk in all of this. My biggest preference is that when you degen into things or when you try different dApps or you use MSOL, GDSOL, cool. But remember, take a little bit of soul whenever you can, stake with validator.com. Supports me, supports validator.com, and it is the safest form of getting yield on soul. Quick little reminder, you've got less than, by the time this is out, 5.49 p.m. my time, UTC plus one, that will be 24 hours. You need to do this lesson in order to start getting these rewards. You complete these lessons, you get rewards from Greed Academy. Greed Academy is just, just for context. You win and uh, it was like going to be a meme coin. It wasn't a meme coin. It was a, it was a trick. They, they locked up your stake until breakpoint. You can get that stake back in various ways or, or, or a DAO vote basically. But if you're staking with them and you if you haven't unlocked it like I have, this is a worthwhile thing. There'll be more lessons and I may even do some lessons for them as well because I agree with the education component. A little bit of an update here on HiveMapper. I don't have any HiveMapper. I don't have any of the tokens. I don't have the actual device. But if you can get the device, I think this would be a worthwhile investment if you do a lot of driving. I don't know when it ships. But they're just, they're making progress. And remember, this is just data. And as more of this comes out, as more people use this, as it becomes more and more updated, this data will be exceptionally valuable. Will it be valuable at the end of the cycle? I don't know, but it's the kind of thing where the actual company can do well for like for years to come. And Simon's cat token, just a reminder, August 22nd, you can also enter the pre-sale by buying a token, a token fire, I think it's what, it, what it's called. And I, I've done it personally. I've, I've done it because of this tweet here from uh, Uni, Uni PCs. I don't even know how to pronounce the name. AKA the bonk guy, the bonk guy. So for context, the bonk guy put in $16,000 bought $16,000 worth of bonk on a 6.5x leverage play on Bybit at the low November, October, around that time last year. It went up to over $10 million, like $16 million or something insane. It's now gone down to about half of that. He's paid over a million dollars in bonk and he's got big conviction when it comes to particular meme coins. And I think this is, this is a safer play. And I don't like he, like, I feel there's a decent amount of transparency here. I don't know him. He's never replied to a, a DM or anything or, or tag. So I don't know. I've never spoken to him. I have no idea who it is. 
One thing is, it's a main cat on BNB. BNB should do well. I think CZ should get out of prison um, pretty soon as well. And then BNB will just explode again. And people will play over there. And I think it'll be BNB and Base and Solana. And then maybe Sui or whatever, but we'll see how it goes. Simon's cat is ridiculously undervalued at 25 million and he's got his thesis here. Three questions I've gotten about Simon's cat. Not on the team. Pre-sale is not bearish for a meme coin of Simon Simon's cat caliber, especially with involvement from Flocky, BNB. Don't know what DWF is. Main way to join the pre-sale is to stake token on TokenFi and Flocky holders will get an airdrop. So you may want to buy some Flocky. I've gone and bought, or I recently gone and bought $1,200 worth of TokenFi today, just now and gone and actually um, uh, put it into the launch pad. And he's got a link here for me. So we'll just go and grab this link and I'll show it to you in a second. Uh, re BNB says best bridge is Orbiter, um, but I'll probably just suggest you can check out Orbiter, but D-Bridge. Um, and best BNB trading pot. Well, I'm not going to do that, but that might be interesting for you. He expects Simon Cat to do very well. The meme is objectively more popular than the top three cat meme coins combined. And they're all each above 500 million. It is backed by the official Simon's Cat IP, which has millions of subs on YouTube. And we've been pushed to tens of millions of users through their channels. Flocky BNB backing. The above is a quick summary of the questions I've got, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is the token price. It like it came up on the announcement and then it's coming down. And this is where I've gone and bought it. And this is where you go and you actually jump in to this launch pad. So you're going to need to use Rabi Wallet or MetaMask. And the public sale starts on this date. And then I don't know what I'm going to put in. I don't know how much I'm going to put in. I'm like, Bond Guy's going to put in max. I don't know what I'm going to put in. A couple thousand dollars. We'll see how it goes. I, we've got time. We've got time. But this is what I'm doing. I'm just letting you know what I'm doing. All right. We've got some actionables. We'll go through the actionables. And then we'll quickly head over and have a look at the liquidity pool and see how it's done with GM.ai. So let me just uh, take myself away. And let's go full screen. Okay. The action was today, deadline to claim drift. Please claim your drift. August 16th, 6 p.m. UTC. Deadline for Infinix Path to Patron, August 16th, midnight. So from now, you've got uh, 11 hours or something. I don't even know what the time is. FTX official liquidation claim, election deadline. I don't know what this exactly means. If you if you miss it, it like, are you in difficulty? I don't know, but but put effort on it now. The Jito Soul PYUSD vault on Camino is still decent. I want to put some funds in here. I'm going to do it for the 10K to 100K challenge. Remove your liquidity from clone as well. I remember, or someone told me, I bought Pepe. That's what I did. I'll remove that and I won't have any Pepe exposure. Next tab, airdrop actionables. Deposit into Camino's Jito Soul Soul Meteor Pool. You get the Met points. Join Renzo's Easy Soul waitlist. Claim your drift tokens, as I just mentioned. Get $50 to $100 worth of Flocky on BNB or ETH. It's not financial advice. I haven't done it myself, but I will be doing it today. And play Hamster Combat for five minutes every day. Still worth the effort, I feel. Now let's go have a look at our pool. Let's see if this did well or if it didn't do well. So I put in $205 thereabouts and randomly says your deposit is 62,000. So there's definitely some API error here. And I just want to see if I withdraw it all, was this profitable? Probably not a lot of time actually to actually accumulate fees. I'm going to, I'm going to leave it a little bit longer and then I'll just update on Twitter. I don't know if this will do well, but I think it's worth considering. All right, that's all. Thanks for joining the live stream. Let me know your feedback below and I'll catch you in the next either video or live stream.